Well, yesterday we asked for your views on this story and, as always, plenty of opinion. Maureen Philpot from Toftwood in Durham wonders if there would have been as much controversy if Elizabeth had been a male MP. The affair is over. She's, she's good at her job and learned her lesson. So should she be forgiven for this misdemeanour? Imogen from Ipswich made the same remark as well. Well, Vanessa emailed us to say, uh, I myself came up from uh, London 11 years ago and experienced the Norfolk way of life. If you're not from Norfolk, uh, you don't just fall into understanding how it works, she goes on. The question of main concern is the desire of the corridors of power to impose their A-list candidate on South West Norfolk, taking away the democratic rights of the local people to choose their representative, something there that Sir Jeremy Bagg was enforcing as well. And Tony from Weatherden in Suffolk thinks he has the answer to the MP selection row. He says make it compulsory for anyone standing for election as an MP to have lived in the constituency for at least two years. Well, thank you, as always, for your emails. Really good stuff there. Now, more news uh, from your region. And uh, a man who's been charged with murder has accidentally been released from a prison in Essex. Jason Bethel, who's 31 years old and from Broadway in Jaywick, was remanded in custody at Chelmsford Prison last week and was awaiting trial. Police say he's considered a danger to the public and are asking anyone who knows where he might be to get in touch with them. Now, a busy Norfolk supermarket has been evacuated and remains closed to the public this evening after a chemical scare sparked by a mystery gas. A number of people are thought to have been hurt at the Asda store in Helsden near Norwich. There have been unconfirmed reports that it was a result of someone letting off pepper spray. Customers and staff were forced to leave the building and the car park was cordoned off as a chemical incident unit from Norfolk Fire Service attempted to identify the gas. Hopes have been raised for the long-term future of Vauxhall workers in Luton after a series of high-level talks were held this afternoon. Leaders from the Unite Union as well as Business Secretary Lord Mandelson met earlier with Nick Riley, who's the head of operations in Europe for the American firm. Mr Riley said there was scope for a reduction in the 800 job cuts which were threatened earlier this year. I think with the new plan they're bringing forward, uh, that is more likely to bring early stability to the company and I think also give Vauxhall a longer term prospect uh, of production um, uh, which uh, whilst others uh, were saying that they would match there was never quite uh, the same um, commitment I don't think. Well it's 14 minutes past six. Stay with us here on ITV Anglia. The news from where you live is coming up next. Amanda's here with the weather and we're going to be looking back at... More news now, and a high-flying solicitor has been jailed for 11 years at Norwich Crown Court for a series of sex offences against a girl. Michael Hines of Sal House in Norfolk had denied the charges, including three rapes, eight other sex offences, and one of actually bod actual bodily harm. But he was found guilty at a trial in September. The court heard that Hines, who's 46, often supplied the girl with Class A drugs. Detectives investigating an unsolved murder which happened 35 years ago say they've had a good response to a renewed appeal. Josephine Backshaw was found strangled near Bishop Stortford in November 1974. The 39-year-old who lived in Essex had placed an advert in a local newspaper looking for part-time work in the Malden area. Now a special cold case team of investigators have reopened the inquiry. A 44-year-old man has appeared at Norwich Crown Court, charged with killing his ex-girlfriend and a former golfing partner. John Moody from Norwich is accused of murdering Ken Snell and Karen Brown in Cringleford on the 31st of October. Both were stabbed. Moody was remanded in custody until early next year. Bosses at the Norfolk and Norwich University Hospital have defended themselves after it was revealed hundreds of operations were cancelled in six months. Statistics by the Department of Health show that 400 operations were cancelled for non-clinical reasons between April and September. However, bosses say because they are the busiest hospital in the region, the figures will be higher and amount to less than 1% of overall operations. Now, if you've ever had an MRI or CT scan, you'll know how uncomfortable and claustrophobic tests like that can be. But at one hospital in our region, such problems could be a thing of the past. It's all thanks to new technology, which has only just reached the British shores. Andrea Johnson takes up the story. A familiar image, but Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge is the only place outside London where you'll see a machine like this. That's because the definition flash is the world's fastest CT scanner. From now on, an extra 30 patients can be scanned every day. 
Although today's demonstration was concentrated on the patient's head and neck, the scanner can be used for almost any purpose. It has a lower radiation dose for many applications. So for children, for example, it's a huge benefit. For trauma patients who are obviously being resuscitated, you can get the images in a very short space of time. For things like the heart, you can do it very much quicker, so you can more easily control the heartbeat, get real-time imaging, etc. With stroke victims, it has a particular advantage, helping doctors to pinpoint obstructions that could be treated before they cause further brain damage. One of the problems with stroke is that there's often a lot of calcium around the uh, bifurcation of the vessels and you can separate out the calcium from the contrast agent that we give to show the vessels. Adam Brooks were only able to get hold of this machine because of a donation left in a will. It means the hospital maintains its position as the top CT site in the country. Andrea Johnston, Anglia News. An inspector's report has found that Wayland Prison near Watton in Norfolk is carrying out good work despite struggling to cope with the pressures of overcrowding. The prison, which has a capacity of just over a thousand, has doubled in size since the last inspection. The report found that despite this, Wayland has remained a largely safe and purposeful prison with a sound focus on resettlement. Bus passengers in Essex are facing yet more disruption with drivers working for First Bus set to stage another strike on Monday. Talks aimed at resolving the dispute over pay broke down again last night without agreement. The company have condemned the union for refusing to go to the conciliation service ACAS. But the union say First have offered nothing new and until they do there's no point in holding any further talks. Bosses at the East of England Ambulance Service say they're disappointed that the number of assaults on their staff is on the increase. 95 ambulance staff were attacked while carrying out their work between 2008 and 9. That's up from 85 in the previous year. Bosses say any violence against them is unacceptable. We've had um, clinicians um, threatened with knives. Uh, we've had uh, clinicians actually physically assaulted and there was a, a case of one of my colleagues actually being knelt on by a member of the public and, and hit around the head several times. The RSPCA is appealing for information after a cat was found hanging from a washing line at Beckles in Suffolk. A passerby heard the cat called Lily screaming and took it to the vets, but it had to be put down because of its injuries. Laura Ramsey reports. Minnie and Roy Bartholomew are self-confessed cat lovers. So when they heard about an act of cruelty in the road they've lived in for nearly 50 years, they were shocked and upset. Well, being a cat lover, I just couldn't believe anybody could do anything like that to them. This washing line was tied around Lily's waist. Vets found part of the cord in her stomach, possibly where she'd bitten it to free herself. I've spoken to Lily's owner and she didn't want to appear on camera, but she did tell me that whoever tied her cat to this tree must be pretty sick. And that's a sentiment that's been echoed by many other people I've spoken to today. I'm totally disgusted and shocked by what I heard and uh, I think it's very worrying for any other pet owners in the area. Sick, disgusted, um, I don't know how people can, can do that kind of thing. The RSPCA is urging anyone with information about what happened to Lily to come forward. I've dealt with a lot of cruel things in my, my time so far and there seems to be a certain level of premeditation and decision making to go through this. If indeed it is a deliberate act, um, whoever did this obviously thought about what they were doing and it would have taken some time to have got the cat into that position. Mr and Mrs Bartholomew are keeping a close eye on their cat Thomas until the person responsible is caught. And they're encouraging their neighbours to do the same. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Beckles. Distressing stuff there.